Hello and welcome to this YouTube channel for ACCA FR exam prep. My name is Adam. In this video, I will be taking you through how to account for a basic earnings per share and diluted earnings per share. So we look at the details and what would cause the dilution of the shares. The requirement is always to look out for that. Calculate the basic, so it's asking for basic and diluted basic and diluted earnings per share for the year ended 31st March 20x2 details Abico had the same 10 million ordinary shares in issue on both 1st April X1 and 31st March X2 so at the start of the year they had 10 million ordinary shares at the end they had 10 million ordinary shares now on the 1st of april the company issued 1.2 million one dollar units of five percent convertible loan stock and because of this convertible loan stock they will cause what we call a dilution they will cause a dilution of the earnings or the share, the number of shares. Now, each unit of stock is convertible into four ordinary shares on 1st April 20x9 at the option of the holder. So we have extra from ABS, PL, and OCI for the year. So we have profit before interest and tax. We have interest on the 5% loan no stock. And then we have the profit before tax. And we have the income tax at the rate of uh, 30%. So here, the diluted and the basic and special calculation will be as follows. So we look at the basic. So I have here basic. So the basic earnings per share would be equal to the profit made in a year look at it the profit made in a year uh, which is 644 so 644,000 divided by the 10 million shares so divided by 10 million shares which was the shares in issue at the start of the year so quickly this will be 644 divided by 10,000 that gives us 0. 0644 four. and if you want to convert it into cents that will be 6.44 cents 6.44 cents now the calculation for the diluted, very important, the diluted EPS would be calculating the earnings. I'll take you to a process to find this. The earnings plus what we call notional earnings. And the notional earnings will be the saving on the convertible loan interest if the loan note converts into shares at the end of the year. So we add notional 
earnings. And I'll show you how to calculate the notional earnings. All of these divided by the number of shares in issue. So the number of shares in issue plus notional notional shares. So uh, two very important things to look at here in terms of the calculation. I have the first one to be the notional savings or the notional earnings. It's the same. This would be equal to the interest paid on the low note, which is the 5%. And it's going to be saved because at the year end, the assumption is that this low note will convert into equity shares. So uh, if you want to cross check this interest, is the value which will be 1.2, 1.2 million times 5%. You can cross check that. So 1,200 times 0 0.05, that should give us 60. And the interest now becomes subject to tax before because of the debt it is tax deductible but because it is not going to be interest on the uh, debt anymore because they will convert they will save but we need the after tax savings so the after tax savings will be the sixty thousand times seventy percent because the tax rate is 30 percent so the after tax so it is 1 minus 0 0.3 1 minus 0 0.3 that gives you 0 0.7 so the savings here would be 60 times 0.7 would be 42,000 and this 42,000 becomes a notional interest saved then we account for the notional shares. And for the notional shares, we will use the conversion ratio. And the conversion ratio has been given in the question to be that for each unit, for each unit of stock, is convertible into four ordinary shares. It's convertible into four ordinary shares. And that will be one over four. So each unit is, conver is converted into what? Four. So you are looking at the total figure of the low note converted into the number of shares. Each unit gives you four. Each unit gives you four. So it means that 1.2 million so let me say 1 200 times 4 will give us the number of ordinary shares to be issued for each unit so 1.2 times 4 that gives us 4.8 so is million 4.8 million shares now what we will do next is to find now the diluted so d e p s would be the profit before interest and tax so look at it it is this figure 980 so we take that 980 that will be the profit before interest and tax so the diluted the diluted earnings per share 
calculation is going to be remember i've stated the formula here is the earnings plus the notional earnings so the earnings let's see is six four four which is the profit for the year so six four four thousand plus the notional earnings or the notional savings which is forty two thousand all of these divided by the number of shares which is ten million so the number of shares in issue ten million plus four point eight which is the notional shares million so this would be equal to so here four uh, six four four plus forty two this gives us six eighty six thousand divided by ten plus ten million plus four that will be fourteen point eight million so a uh, very simple calculation so if we have 686 divided by 14800 this would give us in dollars 0 0.046 convert into cents would have 4.6 four cents go this uh, was uh, 0 0.046 three five okay and, and so on so if you convert to cent you have four point six four cent now comparing this to the basic you will notice that the basic earnings per share is higher than the diluted earnings per share. The significant point to note out is that the earnings were diluted because of the potential shares that the debt or the loan note can be converted into. So we often say that the diluted earnings per share is a warning to the shareholders that these potential shares which are in the debt or the loan note, if the holders were to what convert these loan notes into ordinary shares at the end of the year, the earnings which we are reporting at this date would have been different. So it's a warning that because we have potential shares, the basic earnings, as you say it, to be 6.44 cent would have been much lower because there are existing instrument, financial instrument, which has potential ordinary shares in them. So the diluted earnings per share is a warning. It's not the actual basic uh, earnings per share. It's just a warning. Please, I hope this helps you to understand the calculation of diluted earnings per share and how to even explain in the exam. Subscribe to this channel to receive updates on new videos.